Salam. Let's start today by looking at a completed circuit and exploring how it behaves. For the interest of visibility, I'll start by showing the full zoomed out picture. Here we can see three input switches, eight output probes, and eight AND gates leading to each of those outputs. Now I'll zoom in so we can see the details in the top half a little better. Let's tweak the input codes to see how the outputs change. First, we'll set the input code to 0, 0, 0. We notice this output probe turns to 1. Now we'll try inputting 0, 1, 0. This output probe turns to 1, and all the others are 0. With that little test in mind, pause the video and explore what each AND gate tells us by tracing the wires. Restart the video when you find the pattern. The equations were a big hint here. They tell us that each output represents a min term. If the input code for that particular min term is used, then that particular output is selected to output high. For instance, the min term x prime y z prime will equal 1 if the inputs are 0, 1, 0. We can trace the wires to see the equations in action. x equals 0, and that is complemented to 1 on the blue wire that leads to this AND gate y equals 1, and that red wire feeds directly to the gate. z equals 0, which is complemented, leading to the gate. In all, there are three high values on the front end of the AND gate, which causes the output to be high. Remember that high, true, and 1 all mean the same thing here. Because all of the outputs are unique inputs, only that one specially selected output will be high all the others will be low. Also note that the subscripts of the outputs are taken from the decimal form of the input binary code. This is why 010 activates Q2. So for a quick test of our understanding, what will happen when we input 110? Well, that's the binary code for decimal 6, so I expect that as we scroll down, Q6 will equal 1. Sure enough, it is. Just as important, all other outputs equal zero. What we have here is a three by eight decoder with active high inputs and outputs. When you hear that word decoder, break it apart. The prefix D means from, as in the word descend. And what do you think the code is for logic circuits? It is binary. So a decoder takes an input from binary and converts it into another form. In this example, the input binary code is 3 bits, and the output other form is a min term. You can also think of the output as a single selection of a decimal value. A binary code comes in, and one special line is activated on the output. This particular setup uses active high input and outputs. So, the specially selected output line holds a value of 1, while all of the unselected lines hold a value of zero. If we instead wanted active low outputs, we could simply replace each of the AND gates with NAND gates. That would cause the specially selected output line to hold a value of zero, while all the others equal one. That same logic can be summarized in a truth table, like you see here. It is clear to see that in the active high setup, only one output line equals one, while all the others equal zero. And that one moves diagonally down the rows because we structured the truth table as a straight count. The active low output truth table is seen here. The output columns are just the complement of the previous table. Fun thing here, it looks like snow falling as I flip back and forth between the tables because all of the entries are swapping. In the active low table, the selected line holds a zero all others hold a 1. Let's now explore another circuit. It has a similar structure to the 3 by 8 encoder we just looked at, but with two big changes. First, there are only two input bits, so that makes it a 2 by 4 decoder. I chose to show a smaller example just for ease of visibility. 
but we could have a 3x8 decoder, a 4x16 decoder, a 5x32 decoder, and so on. The same pattern holds with AND gates identifying specific MIN terms. The other big change is the switch labeled EN. What does it do? Pause the video and trace the wires. Ask yourself, what happens when EN equals 1? What happens when EN equals 0? Restart the video when you think you know. EN is short for enable. When enable equals 1, this NOT gate creates a 0 that is passed on to all of the AND gates. If one input to an AND gate is 0, then the output is guaranteed to be 0. So with enable equal to 1, all of the outputs are 0, regardless of what the X and Y inputs are. This is the case where the circuit is disabled, so all of the outputs are inactive. But when enable equals 0, this becomes a signal of 1 transmitted to all of the AND gates. Now the circuit will behave like the previous decoder. One output line is selected to be active based on the input binary code. Here with X and Y both 1, then Q3 is activated. Here with an input code of 0, 1, Q1 is activated. This is a case of an active low enable input. A low value here allows the circuit to function normally. A high value disables the circuit. We could easily switch this to active high enable by removing the NOT gate. This slide shows the same circuit and also the function table. A function table is essentially an abbreviated truth table. A truth table must show all possible input combinations to be complete. But this function table takes advantage of the fact that all outputs equal zero when the circuit is disabled. When enable equals one, remember this is an active low enable, then all outputs equal zero, regardless of the X and Y inputs. We place the don't care X's on these inputs because they simply don't matter. But when enable equals zero, the circuit is enabled, and those inputs X and Y do matter. The specific binary code input causes a specific output to be active. Notice how the function table, with its use of don't cares on the inputs, provides a succinct and thorough summary of the whole behavior of the decoder. What are decoders good for? There are lots of applications, and we'll get to use some of these in later larger circuits in this course. One application is illustrated here. The processing unit, or CPU, in your computer manages communications with peripherals. Sometimes it wants data from the keyboard to be stored to memory. Sometimes it wants data from memory to appear on the monitor, and so on. In this simplified setup, all of these peripherals connect to a common data bus, this large black line, which allows for easy communication with relatively little hardware. The trouble is that only one peripheral can have access to the data bus at one time. One set of wires can only hold one set of logic values. So the CPU will grant access to the data bus to just one peripheral at a time. How can it do this? It sends the address code, which is in binary, into a decoder which then produces just one active output line. That active line enables the connection between the one specially selected peripheral and the data bus. Meanwhile, the other connections are inactive, which means there's no data conflict. 